and there's, I would assume, four copies of Bloodstained Mire. There are. But that's still asking a lot. Though the format in general, I think, is a little bit slower than the previous standard formats were. So if you don't have your mountain by turn four, it gets a lot of these matchups, obs on. It's not really going to doom you. Look, sometimes you got to live on the wild side, man, okay? Never really got that. There's a Temple of Triumph, not a mountain. We'll scry, though. But he does have a Bloodstained Mire in hand. So there you go. Well, he might have get a swamp with it. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. We'll see a Temple of Malady here. Take a look at the top card with McGregor. Top card to the bottom. Back to Schultz will go. Sometimes I think maybe I'm just too conservative of a deck builder, and I just have to get over that. You certainly are. You certainly are. I played a deck with my Kithkin deck. I played a Johnny Vengeant with eight red sources. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's I've, horrible. I have Dark Confidant on and Hit Run. There you go. See? I have Dark Confidant and Gargadon. I didn't know you, I didn't know you went that way. I, I knew Antonino DeRosa did. I didn't know if you did as well. I sort of tangentially worked on that deck. I discouraged the Gargadon, but mm. whatever. So the Blessing Mar actually did search for the Swamp. So and we'll see if he's able to, Schultz, find a mountain here. Seeker well, of the ways to start, And if he doesn't have Chain of the Rocks, then it doesn't even matter. This is true as well. It's free in so many directions. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that, yes. You keep telling yourself that. This is a thought seize. This is certainly not free, but it will get some information. Not one, but two copies of Crackling Doom, along with a Murderous Cut, a Lightning Strike, and then the last card is a Temple of Triumph. Problematic for decks like Mardu Midrange, just not a lot of threats. And if this Seeker of the Way dies, then Donovan's really stranded with a hand that goes nowhere. Can easily be overpowered by Planeswalkers, or just Obzon Charms drawing cards. I'm trying to figure out what McGregor probably takes here. The selections are tough. This all feels like six of one, half dozen of the other. Probably yeah. take a Crackling Doom because it deals damage. Yeah, Crackling Doom is so good. It's not like you can cut him off of a removal spell since his hand's four removal spells. Yeah, so yeah. Take the one that's best in sort of a broad stroke sense. There's a sense of Citadel before passing the turn back over to Schultz. Schultz will draw a card. Another copy of Secret Wave is what he's found. Take a look at the top card here with the Scry of Temple of Triumph. That one stays pretty quickly. In for two we go. McGregor's going to go down to 16. Second Seeker on the way. And that'll be Schultz's turn. That's a great draw for Donovan. His hand needed one more threat. And one that he's able to play on curve and now have three removal spells at the ready. All of which play very well with Seeker. If Pat just commits to playing something large on his own turn. I'm currently doing the Bile Blight check. Yeah, I, I was trying to do the same thing. Yeah, they're in the sideboard. That makes sense. So they're, they're clear for takeoff, are those Seekers. We don't live in a world with main deck Bile Blights really just yet, but I think we might be getting there. I mean, in mono black aggro. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not sure we want to get to that deck. No, we, we don't. When swept Heath. We'll put McGregor down to 15. Time to search up either a forest or a plains. It'll be a forest. McGregor's got a spell to cast in just a moment. We'll see how he wants to sequence the spells, knowing that the first handful of creatures are going to die. So I think how Pat needs to measure this game is spending these turns removing creatures because he doesn't want to have his turn get removed by a removal spell and then take a bunch of damage. So this turn, I think it's, it's got to be Hero's Downfall instead of casting, say, Anafensa. So Anafensa pr produces nothing. means he takes six points of damage, plus two from the Crackling Doom. So... I'd rather just cast a hero's downfall, I think. When you see McGregor's hand, he does have Anafenza, does have hero's downfall. He's just going to pass the turn back, so you know the removal spells here at the ready. Schultz going to start by attacking here. Here's downfall. Going to target the Seeker here. Might be time for Schultz to consider cashing in this Lightning Strike for an extra point of damage. I think that's what he's thinking. He's probably yep. not doing anything else, so... It's actually kind of a two-deal four in a weird way. Yeah. I mean, this is not a great use of resources or a turn, but I think this Lightning Strike isn't going to do very much else. It's a strange Flame Rift-esque card there. But puts McGregor down to nine in combination with the Seeker of the way. Also gains Schultz some life, so he's up to 22. But Pat still has to figure out a way to maneuver through all this removal. Fleece main line in his hand has gotten slightly better now that Lightning Strike is down. And if he's drawn a Thought Seize, he may... This might be a turn where he can start getting through a little bit of it, at least. Well, he has drawn a Thought Seize. I think that's another Crackling Doom. Yep. 
So that's tough. Two dooms and a cut. So he's going to take another doom. That card is a nightmare to play against. Jeez, this is really the first time we've seen Mardu. On Crackling the Doom series. is the real deal. Yeah, that card is just a nightmare to play against. If you're playing these mid-range decks, forget about it. I mean, against Mono Red, it's not going to be that effective of a tool. But when your deck is Anafenzas and Fleece Main Lions, it is really good. I think if you're McGregor, he's just going to pass the turn back and not play anything. I almost feel like you have to cast something that turn. Maybe I'm wrong. Ooh, Chain to the Rocks. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you called that. As if on cue. Yep. Well, if he has some way to play over the top of the Seeker, then he really shouldn't cast any creatures at all. But The problem is I don't, I'm not convinced he has a way to, ca to play over the Seeker. Like, he, he has a Siege Rhino that I think is kind of his endgame plan. So I almost feel like that turn he was supposed to play the Fleece Main Lion and just to have it die to a removal spell and get past that point in the game and then play your Rhino. But, I mean, I could be wrong about that. I'm really surprised to see... Donovan not use the Crackling Doom in that spot? Well, he doesn't want to use it on the oh, end of turn because sure. of Seeker. Yeah, the prowess, so... Yeah, I, I guess it's... It's pretty bad if, if Donovan draws a spell that matters that turn because he basically gave up his whole turn to get in one extra point of damage. Instead, he drew a mountain for his Chain of the Rocks. Perfect. Who's laughing now? No one. No one finds this funny. Back to back. And we will chain it up. So bye-bye, Rhino. Trigger prowess, of course. This will allow attack for three, so undo all the work that the Rhino did. And McGregor actually has another Rhino in his hand. So he's just trying to power through this the best that he can. If he draws a removal spell, he's in the clear all of a sudden. Absolutely. Because then he can cast Soren and try to get through the removal that way. Mm -hmm. But until he draws a removal spell, Donovan's hand is really problematic. That's why that second Seeker all those turns ago was such an important draw step. It's also the ability to play two creatures in one turn. If he yes. can get there as well. He just drew his fifth land, which is a Temple of Silence. He also has a Rhino in his hand. So I can see him playing Rhino this turn, going back up to eight. Kind of the same sequence that's happening again, where he loses it. And then the next turn plays Sweet Main Line and an offensive if his mana cooperates. And then he might be okay. Yes. It's a plan. That's what it's going to take, though. And that also, you know, that's also saying, of course, that Donovan just draws nothing. But that might just be what McGregor needs to have happen. Well, keep in mind that Donovan's committed here to getting the prowess trigger here off the Crackling Doom, so he's down a draw. And see, this is a spot where he kind of gets punished for. He drew a Seeker. I guess he could just go Murderous Cut and cast Seeker. That's pretty good, too. That's a pretty good turn, yeah. There's Seeker. This is a cut. See, he's going to pay two mana for the cut, make sure he doesn't delve everything away. And now this will be attack for three again. So again, undoing all the work that the Rhino has done. McGregor back down to five. And now McGregor's plan of stabilizing two creatures still works out okay. Well, he's still, the Crackling Doom's still in hand. Well, the Doom, it, well, the Doom two and then three. Okay, sure. So the Seeker actually ends up being a pretty good draw there. Exactly, yep. because the Crackling Doom takes care of the Anafenza, and then Fleece Main Lion's compelled to block. Yeah, that's the issue. The second Seeker is actually the perfect draw, because if it's, if it's not second Seeker, and let's say it's just a land for, in that situation, he plays both creatures, Crackling Doom kills something, and then he's able to block the lethal creature. Mm -hmm. But because Seeker of the Way came off the top, there's two creatures out there, Crackling Doom actually ends up being the check mark to take care of the creatures, and then Seeker of the Way can get through the last lethal point of damage. So Donovan Schultz going to win game number one here with Marty Midrange over Pat McGregor playing Ops on Aggro. As we head over to the sideboards, and we will start with McGregor and his Abzan Charm, his Ajani Mentor of Heroes, three Bile Blight, two Despise, two Drown and Sorrow, two Erase, a Murderer's Cut, a Silence of the Believers, an additional Soren, and a Wingmate Rock. What do you like? I like the Silence of the Believers, the three copies of Bile Blight, and not a whole lot else. The Murderer's Cut, the Wingmate Rock. Just the removal spells, an extra, an extra way made rock I like for this matchup a lot. I think Blight's probably the best of the bunch. Things do get a little bit awkward because it doesn't kill Stormbreath Dragon or Butcher of the Horde, but, you know, he got ran down by Seeker the way there. And Rival Master is a concern as well. Yeah. What do we see on Donovan's side? A Chandra Pyromaster, an Elspeth Sun's Champion, three Banishing Lights, three Thought... Uh, excuse me, two Banishing Lights, three Thought Seizes, two copies of Magma Spray, two copies of Anger of the Gods, two End Hostilities, two copies of Glare Heresy. I like the Banishing Lights, the Glare of Heresies, and the Chandra. I would not really want the Thought Seizes that much in this matchup, I think. But I do, I like the removal spells. They're flexible and they play on curve, but I think, uh, you know, the Thought Seizes here, I don't think Donovan really wants to play that long or, or attritionally of a game. It's more about his curve, and that's what I want to play towards. As we've gone here through this format, I've been more and more impressed by Chandra. Yeah, we see one copy in sideboards, sometimes one copy in the main, one copy in the sideboard, and 
so many of these decks are committed to blocking that the plus power is very good. The games also have a habit of dragging out, so you can spin the zero over and over again. And for decks like Jeskai, the ultimate is lethal. Mm -hmm. Or it's lethal a huge percentage of the time. Yep. I've been really, really impressed with that card. Hopefully we'll see it show up in this game at some point, as it's really starting to become the card I think people expected it to. Just a little bit late. You know, over the past year it hasn't been all that great, but this year it looks pretty good. When Theros was the most recent set, I always felt like it was doing good work for me in, in various burn strategies I was trying. It is tough to keep the board stable enough to protect it, but against decks like Obzon that don't really start doing anything until turn three, turn four, they certainly don't mount an offensive very, very quickly. They don't have a lot of haste or any haste at all. Chandra can do a lot of work. Very quickly, we will talk about our 2014 schedule. Well, the rest of the dates, of course, as we are in Minneapolis here, third one down. It's weird to say that we don't have a lot of 2014 left, even though we do have a lot of shows left. We have a show, I think, every weekend until Christmas weekend. Yeah, very, very close. We're going to go to Oakland next weekend. After that, Columbus, Grand Prix, New Jersey. Then we'll go to the Open Series in Richmond. Enjoy your weekend off. Woohoo, Rutgers MSU. Yeah, that's really going to be something. <laughs> Along with us going to Atlanta after that. And then I'll take my weekend off when we go to Portland. Uh, I will not watch anything involving Purdue athletics because that's embarrassing. And then we will go to Seattle for our Invitational and then Roanoke. It is kind of nice to have that Portland-Seattle slant. I don't have to get in an airplane for a couple weeks. That'll be great. We don't go to the Pacific Northwest that often. It's beautiful up there, and I'm excited. Well, it won't be beautiful then, most likely. You guys, it Do doesn't you really enjoy... get snow up there, right? We don't... Uh, a little bit. It can't happen. If it does, it's a, it's a disaster state. People just can't drive it. They can't do anything. And Seattle is very hilly, right? Yeah, they can't do anything. Yeah. So I've talked to some Seattle, really some bad. Wizards employees who tell me when it snows, it's just you can't even drive on the streets. When I first moved there, it snowed an inch. I'm not kidding, an inch. And six people called off of work that day. Oh, it's very common in uh, with when it rains in Southern California. Uh, you that's just it. cannot go on the roads. Yep. You cannot. Six people called off of work at the Red Robin I was working at. I drove down the hill, worked my shift where four people came to the restaurant all evening. And then I couldn't get up the hill that my house was on. If a foreign power wanted to invade the United States, you know what I tell them to do? Just drop water on San Diego. <laughs> and the white flag would be the white flag would be unfurled faster than anything you've seen in your entire life. <laughs> a fleece made lion here for McGregor on turn two. <laughs> we'll see if Oh the humanity! <laughs> we'll see if Schultz can match that. Well he does have his combo of white mana and a basic mountain for the chain of the rocks in his hand. You can also lightning strike it. Looks like he's contemplating a thought seize as well. A lot of options. Looks like we'll see some thoughts here. And there's a hand. You've got three lands along with the murder's cut and a hero's down for the lands here are Urborg, Sansep Citadel, and Windswept Heath. It's actually not the most impressive of hands here from McGregor. This is sort of the same situation that Donovan was in last game, but in reverse. If something happens to this Fleecebane lion, Pat's hand goes nowhere. Yeah. He's got nothing going on. Schultz will pass the turn back. McGregor's going to untap and draw. He's looking for something that matters. Bile Blight is just another removal spell to replace the hero's downfall. Though, again, that one cannot kill Butcher of the Horde or Stormbreath Dragon. So McGregor will start by attacking for three here. Schultz will go down to 15. We'll see what land McGregor wants to play before passing the turn back. Considering Urborg will play Urborg, maybe. Not, I would play the Windswept Heath here because there's a chance that he's going to want to cast the Murderous Cut. And he can't do that unless he plays the Windswept Heath. I don't, so, like, I don't like playing Urborg because I don't want to give my opponent more black mana. Exactly. Maybe, maybe Donovan's hand, for all you know, has a Bile Blight in it, and now, all is, and now it's turned on. Well, we see the Chain of the Rock is going to take care of the Fleece main line. Just going to pass the turn back over to McGregor. McGregor draws a Hero's Downfall. If Pat wanted to play not the Windswept Heath, then he put a, should have played the Sandsip Citadel because the Urborg does nothing for his mana that turn. He can't cast the only card in his hand, which is Murderous Cut. So time for a Butcher of the Horde? Yes, sir. Now, I have a feeling we're going to see more of this card. You see McGregor yeah. taking a look. We're going to do the same. This thing is way too good for how much play it's seeing. Way too good of a card. The opportunity cost is high. And we had the same story during Ravnica Block where you can only cram so many gold cards in your deck. And then some cards, you know, something like Simic Charm, which seemed really powerful on the surface, see, sees essentially zero play over its shelf life through standard. Gold formats, just that's just something that happens. McGregor able to use Hero's Downfall to get Butcher of the Horde off the table. His draw for this turn was an Obzon Charm, so that'll be useful since he doesn't really have much action at this point. Schultz going to tap a whole bunch of mana yet again. Might be time to go to the Horde again. It is. 
McGregor's going to sacrifice his windswept teeth before moving forward, so he's going to go down to 19. And what you're seeing is one of the issues with Butcher the Horde, in contrast to something like Siege Rhino, is when your opponent has a Terminate, life just goes on mm -hmm. and nothing's happened. You see Schultz is already picking up his Butcher of the Horde. Has a feeling it's going to die. McGregor does have answers to it in his hand. Has Murderous Cut along with Obzon Charm. So that thing's not long for this world. We'll just see how he wants to get it off the table. Here's three mana. It looks like he's going to start with Obzon Charm, just drawing two cards, paying two life to do so. So circling back from a couple turns ago, I think the reason that Pat played the Urboard there was to ensure that he could Bioplay in case Donovan had a Rabble Master. All right, makes sense. Makes sense. I'm still not sure it's worth it at the end of the day, but that is a reason. Here's the cut. Now the door is open here for McGregor if he's able to draw a relevant creature. He'll untap and take a draw. Another copy of Urborg. Oh, nice. The second Urborg, which I complimented quite a bit. I like it in his deck, but this is, of course, where you see the cost. Indeed. How about a third Butcher of the Horde? One of these will stick. McGregor will draw a card. Rakshasha Death Dealer is what he's found. Part of the charm of playing Abzan Agro is your threats are so durable. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing against a deck with Crackling Doom, none of them feel safe. Yeah, and that's what makes Crackling Doom such a fantastic card is Schultz is going to draw a card. It's a mountain that he's found. So he's got another copy of Chain of the Rocks in hand. Yeah, so he's going to chain that. Bye-bye, Death Dealer. In comes the Butcher. And now we're getting interesting territory, I think, from McGregor, because I imagine he's considering using both these Bile Blights to take down the Butcher of the Horde. How many shots of, How many shots from this Butcher are you going to take before you do it? If you are going to do it next turn, if you don't draw a removal spell, then you should probably just do it now. It's a real decision to make. It's tough. I'm not saying it's not, but I, I feel like... At Pat's life total, he probably can't afford to take another hit next turn if he draws nothing. And if that's the case, his odds of drawing a removal spell next turn are low enough that he just do this now. Not sure if he took the damage on that hit or not. Obzon Charm is the draw. Make sure that our life totals are correct, because it looked like he was deciding, okay, I'll take five and then killed end of turn, but we'll get confirmation on where the life totals are at, as his draw this turn was an Obzon Charm. Pass it back over to Schultz. And it looks like he double bio blighted before damage. Yeah. So sitting at 17. Crackling Doom was the draw for Schultz, so he'll just pass the turn back. And hey, drawing Ops on Charm is a reason to keep your life total high, I guess you could Abs say. Absolutely. I think for McGregor, he drew two lands off that Ops on Charm. And now he's drawing a copy of Wingmate Rock. Strange game between these two players. There's a windswept Heath. Of course, with Wingman Rock, you don't just want to play it. Correct. <laughs> you so, <know? laughs> yeah. If you're playing around removal spells, then, well, the, the thing that you play to set up Raid, if you ever draw it somewhere down the line, will die to the same removal spell you're playing around yeah. now. And that was, like, the most reluctant, like, I, I guess I'll cast this. I know it's going to die a Wingmate Rock ever, but I'm never going to be able to get to satisfy the Raid Clause. So, yeah, here this is, and it's going to get doomed probably. So, another shoulder shrug, and all right, I guess we're just kind of through this phase of the game. McGregor takes two in the exchange. Because there's the risk of Donovan having thought seize, if, if it's close on what you want to do, you should just err on casting the stuff in your hand. And I think there's not much upside to be gained from keeping the Wingmate Rock in hand, so I like Pat casting it. It does, it does not look good, but I think it's the right play. Big draw there from Schultz. McGregor is going to take one from the windswept teeth. Looks like he's going to go down to... Eight, he's thinking about it. It does get a land out of his deck, but it also knocks him into range of dying to the Storm Breath Dragon. Well, he's in range next turn anyway, because he has two cards in hand. So if he draws and misses, it's exact lethal. Yep. I know your instinct is to say, well, it hits in increments of four, but that might not matter here. And he just drew a land. It is punishment for Pat slow rolling the lands in his hand. Sure. Could have just cat he could have just played them. He'll pass. Schultz is going to draw a card. We knew Storm Breath Dragon was good against Abzan. It looks good here. Here's the attack. We'll see if there will be a monstrosity activation or not. Get him. The answer is yes. There is a rule spell. And Donovan Schultz is going to win this match with Mardu midrange. He moves on to 9-1. And, and for Donovan, very real shot of him being the number one overall seed tomorrow morning. I like this deck a lot. It's a lot of really solid cards. 
no two ways about it. And Storm Breath Dragon, I think, is one of the best threats you can have in the format right now. I think Storm Breath is a good spot to be in. I think Butcher the Horde is a good spot to be in. We've seen how good Seeker and Rabble Master are. I like what I see from this deck. Now, of course, you can be, you know, your base red white, and then you're either splashing blue, as we see in Jeskai for Mantis Rider and Dig Through Time and all those awesome cards, or you're splashing black for Butcher the Horde, Thoughtseize. But I think maybe the best card of all of those cards mentioned could be Crackling Doom. It's, it, there's going to be matches where it's not going to be your best card. When you're playing against aggressive red strategies, a little bit slow, there's some spots where it's not going to be the most efficient thing to be doing. But in similar, you know, where both three color are kind of unwieldy powerhouse matchups, Obzon aggro, Obzon midrange, it's one of the best cards in the format. There's also something to be said for being able to kill a self and carry at it on turn three. Yep. A lot of decks can't do that, so people keep sketchy hands on the back of Sylvan Carry at it, assuming that it's just going to stick. Also, it improves your Jeskai Ascendancy matchup quite a bit, being able to fight over that card specifically. So it's not always going to be the best card, but there are some matchups where it's, it's one of the best cards in standard to have access to. I